everybody, Diana here. Welcome to this episode of So In Common, and especially to our next video for season two of Good Gadgets. So um, the last couple of days, you may have seen season two, episode one of Good Gadgets, where we talked about the just better um, machine brushes, right? Um, I think, I still think they're like fancy 21st century mascara ones, but I don't care because they clean out the bobbin case of my embroidery machine and my sewing machine so well. And I truly, I tell you this in that other video, I truly think that I clean my bobbin case now more because I can just take this, wipe it in there, wipe that off, put it back in the bag and I'm ready to go. So so glad to be with you for another episode of Good Gadgets and uh, season two. So if you have not seen any of the season one Good Gadgets in the YouTube channel, in the videos, they'll have kind of a purple label, a purple heading, and they'll say Good Gadgets in black in a pretty font and they'll have a picture on it. Um, all the season two ones have these more... Um, formatted ones that we're going with now. So, and they'll say season two on them. So you'll know which ones are which. So um, first I must also apologize for the look. In all honesty, it's a Monday afternoon here today. Monday afternoon is typically my day just to get in here in the studio, head down and work. I do my digitizing. I do my quilting designs. I work on samples, all that kind of stuff. But I was working on something today and it brought up the whole idea of what I want to talk about in this video. And I thought, well, you know, everybody knows what it's like when you're working and you don't put on the full makeup and all that. I did take a shower today. I, I did wash the hair, so that's good. Um, but everybody understands that. You guys get it, right? And so I thought, just do the video and, and then have it done for them. So um, while I've got everything out, everything kind of set up. So today's video is going to be about um, kind of three products that are all interrelated. I mean, they literally are, you could almost call them kissing cousins, I guess. But just to let you know, if you enjoy this video or any of the other good gadgets, any of my other how-tos on quilting or machine embroidery, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Click the little bell so you get notified when I add additional content. We're well over 3,000 visitors now and subscribers. I love that. Thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart. I would really love to continue to grow this community. So please share uh, my YouTube channel with your other uh, stitchy friends. I would appreciate it no end. And then... Um, also, of course, there is my website, sewingcommon.com. That's where my blog resides. That's where my patterns reside. There's not a lot of them. I took a lot of patterns, I'll be honest, offline that I had on there because I'm updating them with either better methods, better instructions, things like that. But there are some free patterns still out there. So go check those out. And if you subscribe on my website as well, then you'll get notified when my blog goes out and I'm hoping to get another blog post done this week. Um, and you'll get notified like when patterns and things like that get loaded as well. So I appreciate that also. So let's get all that administrative kind of stuff done and let's talk about the good stuff, right? So I'm going to grab one of my traditional hoops here because today we are going to talk about sticky back stabilizer and what we do with it and a couple of sticky back stabilizers. I know that's all kind of mushmash together, but you'll you'll get what I'm talking about here in a sec. So here's our traditional hoop, right? This reminds me of romper room, romper, stomper, bumper, boo, right? If you lived in the Chicago area growing up in the 60s and I don't know if it's still on the 70s, but when I was a kid in the 60s, you'll remember romper stomper. Boom, boom, boom. Anyway, um, but with your traditional hoop, guys, um, and a sticky back stabilizer, typically a sticky back tearaway, you have to take the hoops apart. You put your sticky back on the on the bottom hoop, and then you have to put them together, and then you score them, peel off the backing paper, 
and then what's left in that hooping area is sticky back. Now, the one thing I have never liked about doing that is that you basically have to almost take your spring, your screw for your tightening out to get it in there in the first place. And then you just have to really tighten. It takes forever to tighten. You really have to hunker down with it. And, you know, I've told you all, I've had carpal tunnel surgery, really stressful on the hands. And yes, today I have a, I have a pretty good cut on my thumb from cooking yesterday. So excuse the blue thumb. <laughs> um, so I never have liked using sticky back stabilizer because of that. I would do anything in the world to get um, out of using a sticky back stabilizer because of that. And then there's another method with a traditional hoop that makes my heart stop and grow a little cold because that is when I see people peel off the back of the sticky back stabilizer and stick it to the back of your hoop. Now, technically, nothing wrong with that idea. In fact, it's a good idea. In fact, I'm going to show you a hoop today that was created by a company you know well, Dime, that was made specifically to do this very thing. And then somebody thought, oh, well, why don't we just stick it on the back of our traditional hoops? No, 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 guys, not the same thing. Because if you don't clean off on your traditional hoops, every last molecule of that sticky, it will find the bed of your machine the next time you go to use it with a traditional stabilization or, you know, like a cutaway or something. It will find the bed of your machine and it will hang up just enough to cause you a world of problems like a broken needle or a bird's nest, stuff like that. Ask me how I know, because when I saw this being used on the back, I gave it a try one time and one time only and never did it again because I wanted to see, you know, does this work as well as what I'm going to show you today, which was a product I was already using that I believed in. But I thought, well, you better give it a try before you tell people no, no, no about it. And so I tried it with my traditional hoop and I'm now telling you no, no, no. Horrible. Oh, it was such a mess, you guys. I literally had to walk away from the room and come back later to the disaster that was left on my machine. I had a bird's nest um, because the sticky was coming undone from the plastic. It had gotten hooked up on my machine. It was a nightmare. So just say no to sticky back stabilizer, your traditional hoop. But like I said, dime who really is, you know, their tagline is they're the embroiderer solutions company. Yeah, they are. They really are. Um, now, you all know that I am an educator for them. That's not a secret. I'm not getting paid to do this video for you. I would be doing this video for you whether I worked with them or not. I love this product I'm about to show you, and I've been using it along before. That's what a lot of people don't know. They're like, well, Diana, you teach for them. But long before I ever was an educator with Dime, I used their product. I was their customer. I'm still their customer. And sometimes, you know, things come along that I'm like, yeah, nice, not for me. But I believe in this product. So that's why I wanted to tell you about it today while I was doing a piece of lace. Ooh. Okay, so now you're ready to go into the camera because you want to know what in the world I am talking about. So let me share my screen with you. All right, something weird was just going on there. That was kind of crazy. Here we go. So we're under my camera. And here is the sticky hoop. There we go. Okay, it comes on this piece of foam core board, everybody. Literally like the foam core board we get at the art store. But of course they put all this information on the front, which I say, don't throw this away. Because one, it reminds you of some information on here. And it's great once you've hooped your piece over at my, like when I hoop over at my hooping station, then I put this and carry it like a tray over to my, my machine that's right here. And then nothing starts to get wonky on me. So I like using this. And then I store my sticky hoop on top of it. So if there's any bit of sticky on the back, it just kind of sticks to that and doesn't get on every other thing. So let me set that to the side because here is, voila, the sticky hoop. This is a four by four. It's for my baby lock or my brother machine. Now, I will tell you that all of these sticky hoops fit 
will fit your specific machine. You would have to pick one for your specific machine. And I'm going to show you how to do that because let me grab my traditional hoop again. My hooping bar on my traditional hoop and my hooping bar on my sticky hoop are exactly the same. Can you see? Let's see. Can we get a little there? So you see how that has that double there? It has that double there. These are exactly the same bar it, are shaped the same. So I'll show you how to find the one that goes with your machine. Never worry. But what the sticky hoop is, guys, is it is a single metal framed hoop. There is no top frame, right? Because all you will ever use this hoop for is sticky back stabilizers. It comes with a package of pre-cut sticky back tearaway stabilizer. Now, you here's the the sticky back tearaway now you all know that i have said in the past i really don't like tearaway stabilizer but can i share with you for a second this summer i have been being educated by someone in the professional embroidery industry whom i completely trust she's run uh, big design shops for years she makes things in multiples so she knows what she's talking about when it comes to stabilizer. And if she has told me something, I tend to believe it. So she's been answering some of my questions and helping me understand more about why and when to use a tearaway. And I will I learned something that the people that are, were originally teaching me how to do embroidery didn't know the right thing to use or do when it comes to a tearaway stabilizer wasn't their fault. We were all kind of learning at the beginning of this whole thing. But now I know more. And so I've been using my tearaways more, using them appropriately. And can I say I'm now team tearaway? Yeah, that's right. Now, occasionally I still get a little, you know, I'm still like a little shy. But more and more I've been using my tearaway stabilizers because now I know which one to use when to use it, how to use it. And that's really the important thing, guys. And that's the kind of information I want to bring to you, the kind of information that will help you make the best decisions to have the best success with your embroidery, your quilting, whatever it happens to be that we're talking about. So yes, learn something new every day. You know, I believe that. And so this summer it was my goal to learn more about tearaway stabilizers and now I can say I am also on Team Tearaway. I like Tearaway Stabilizers because now I know what I'm doing. Anyway, back to our sticky hoop. This is the pre-cut that comes with it, the sticky back tearaway. And you just peel off the backing paper, and I'm going to show you how to load it here in a moment. Um, and you stick it on the back. Now, you see all this leftover gunge on here? No big deal. Don't worry about trying to get this off, peeling it off with your fingernails or anything. Don't worry about it. It's meant to stay on there. Unless it starts causing you a problem with this stabilizer sticking on here, I don't ever clean the back of it. Occasionally, I'll come in and clean off the edge a little bit. Like if I'm seeing it right in here, I'll just get in there and do a little But And the other thing is, guys, if it bothers you so much, because I know with some of you, it bothers you a lot to have it like this. So I'm going to say try to let it go, as they say in that famous movie. Um, but if you can't and you have to clean it with some sort of a solvent like Gooby Gone or baby oil or anything like that, please, for goodness sakes, give it a good wash with a like a Dawn washing detergent and then dry it. Make sure there's no film left on here because any of those solvent films are meant to repel the adhesive and you could have trouble getting this sticky back to stick on here, which you don't want to cause that problem. So I say, just let it go. Don't worry about it and leave it as it is. As you see, I do. And, you know, I've probably, well, I'm, I'll tell you right now, I've not cleaned this one in over two years. <laughs> That's just the truth of the matter. Um, but the reason I wanted to show you this today is because Dime has also done something else. And I'm so happy about this. They've come out with pre-cut uh, sheets of adhesive sew and wash. Their, their wash away stabilizer. Oh my goodness, I am so happy about this. And you want to know why, right? I know you do. And it's because today I was making this um, applied lace napkin. Now, um, so here's the napkin. 
I found these napkins, guys, on Amazon, and I love them. They look like they're um, linen or something. They're just 100% cotton, but they're kind of a schlubby cotton, but there's no, like, big bulky schlubs on here at all. It's very smooth. Boy, do I love it. Now, the fancy fold, I'll just tell you a little story there. So I had the fancy fold. So you all know that Dave, my husband, used to fly for the U.S. Navy. And when he first went into school, um, all of us junior officer wives were taken under the tutelage of the base etiquette director, the um, wife of the captain of school's command, and the wife of the school command's admiral. And we literally did a little schooling of our own. We learned how to do things like fold fancy napkins and how to greet people and all kinds of things that you need to know kind of in that part, in, in that lifestyle. And, you know, a bunch of us thought it was silly at first, but, you know, honestly, we had a really good time and we learned a lot. So now I know that when I greet somebody, I'm probably not going to offend them because I learned the proper ways to do that. It was like going to, you know, Mrs. Goodman's school for girls and etiquette that kind of a thing. But boy, I did learn a lot and they were lovely ladies um, for sure. Absolutely. I think that uh, Sharon, the director of Schools Commands Etiquette School, uh, she also taught the guys and uh, Marcia Goodman, the captain's wife who became a good friend of mine and our dearly beloved um, Admiral Thunman's wife, um, Mrs. Thunman, Betsy. I think they would be happy to know that I still use some of what they taught me. Anyway, that's an aside. But for this napkin, I wanted to do, for Dave and I, I just like a little bit of a lace overlay. You know I love lace, right? Well, this is applied lace, meaning I sewed this lace right onto the fabric. I didn't... Um, create it as freestanding, then apply it with um, like a fusible or something. This is sewn right onto the fabric. Um, but I didn't want to use the tearaway stabilizer in the sticky hoop because I don't like how it hangs around afterwards in your stitches. I eventually want this to be really nice and um, pliable and all with the fabric. So what I love is this new wash away adhesive sew and wash um, because I'll show you the back of it right here. Now, I washed the napkins and dried them, but I haven't washed it since I um, applied the lace to it. But I did. So when you make lace, freestanding lace, you do two layers of wash away stabilizer. Some folks might say, oh, you can get away with one layer. The professional standard for lace making is two layers and trust me you will like the turnout of your project so much better if you do two layers um for sure uh one layer you might get away with something very very simple but anything with any kind of detail you really must do two layers of your wash away stabilizer but when you apply lace directly to fabric typically you will stabilize for the fabric because you're not really doing freestanding lace, you're just doing an applied lace. So here, instead of using the tearaway though, because I didn't want it left under my stitches, I used two layers of the adhesive sew and wash, and I love it. When it was when I was done, I took this back, I peeled the um, uh, adhesive back and just trimmed around it. Now when I wash this again. All of this stabilizer will disappear in the wash, and then this will become a really nice, soft, pliable um, piece of lace on this napkin. And I think it turned out really beautiful. And I know that that would not have happened if I had used a tearaway or some other stabilizer. So that's why I love the adhesive sew and wash. And to be honest, I use two layers of adhesive sew and wash to do a lot of things. I really like it. If I know my fabric can handle water after, I use it a lot for a lot of things. But all you do, it's kind of hard to get under the corner with just my one thumb because of this little blue thing. But let's see if I can do this because I want to show you. That might be easier here on this end or this end. Um, it is really, really easy um, to use once you get it started. 
I'm so bad at this, especially when I can't kind of use both of my fingers. The person that figures out how to do this without having this problem should get a real award. Sometimes I just start like, yeah, I just put my thumb in there and start like sliding it away and then it comes off. So you can see it's really nice and thin like your typical um, sew and wash stabilizer is, but the back of it has that sticky component there. So I love that. For applied lace, two layers, just like if you were making freestanding on the back of your sticky hoop because then all I did was I did my, um, I used my placement template and found out where my center was, put that on there, stuck it down, and it worked like nobody's business. It was fantastic. But let's show you with the tearaway just how we load this. So I'm going to turn it over. Now, I like to hang the bar off the table. I know you can't see that, but do you see how it's kind of up right here? I know you can't really see the edge, but when I hang that bar, everything lays nice and flat. So I like to do that when I can. But let's peel off the backing paper of our tearaway. Now, hopefully, this one usually comes off a little easier. The tearaway is a little bit heavier stabilizer, obviously. Um, there we go. Come on, I get you. I get you. There we go. So I'm going to peel off that backing paper. Don't throw that away because what I like to do is you can see there's a kind of a, a glossy side and there's a matte side, right? Put that glossy side face up underneath your hoop, right? Now, here is my uh, tearaway, sticky on this side. See, not going anywhere. All I do is I like to start at the outside edge, line it up, and then I just flatten it out around my edge like that a little bit. Then I turn it over and I take this glossy side of the backing paper, lay it on there, and then I just really kind of start pushing to make sure I've got it on there well. And then I am hooped and ready to go. I leave that backing paper on there until I'm ready to apply my fabric to it. That way dust and stuff doesn't get on the sticky. So I always have one of these ready in my drawer. So the one I used earlier today that had the uh, sew and wash on it, it had been in my drawer like that for over a week. I just peeled off this top sheet and I was ready to go. And look guys, that's how sticky, I can pick up this whole thing with my hands. That's how sticky those are. Now, when you use the tarot, the um, uh, uh, tearaway stabilizer, you know, you might just have this little bit that you've used. And if you slowly tear that out and you aren't like really rough with it, you can put, keep your little pieces from your, your rolls of sticky back tearaway, keep those little pieces. And then from the back, just put it over that hole. And that way you're not using another whole sheet. So kind of save on a little bit of stabilizer there. But I love that. And so there we're ready to go. Now, the wash away just comes in a cellophane wrapped package like that with a purple label. I'm going to show you how you can find all of these. They come in packages of 25. You get the size that you need to fit your hoop. I'll show you that again. But so the wash away or adhesive sew and wash pre-cuts for your sticky hoop and then your tear away for your sticky hoop. Now remember, you get a package of 25 with the hoop if you purchase a hoop, but there are refills as well. And speaking of that, let's just go straight over to the website. So of course, I'm here at Dimes uh, shop.dzgns.com. I went into their hoops and hooping systems, and here I am on the page that shows the sticky hoops. So you can see they're listed for Baby Lock, Brother, Bernina, Husqvarna, Viking, Janome, and Foth. So kind of all the major brands there, right? And so what you do to find your hoop is you click on the uh, um, machine brand, and you'll see all the little picker, pictures. You can click on them and all of that kind of thing. Um, roll over to Zoom if you want to look at something closer, that kind of stuff. But right here in the box, here's where you pick your hoop. So in this drop-down box, you pick what size you need. 
So on this one, it goes all the way up to a 10 and a half by 16. And they have a 10 and a half by 10 and a half. I know there's a new frame out that size. Awesome. That's great. So you pick what size you need. And then in this drop down box, you pick your machine. Okay. Now I'll tell you a secret. When I bought my sticky hoops originally, I was using only my baby lock machine. And then later on, I bought my brother machine and my brother and my baby lock happened to have the exact same attachment bars. So because they did, I didn't have to buy new hoops for my brother machine. I can use my baby lock and my brothers together. So there is also on this web page a compatibility chart link. So if you need to know whether or not your hoop um, will work with a different hoop in your brand, check that out. Um, but if you know like that your attachment hoop um, fits um, the Altair and the Elegante, you know they're the same, then don't worry too much about that. If they're different on here, it's because they they do have a different attachment probably. So here's the other thing. You're only going to see, let's pick this 10 and a half by 15. Notice in our drop down box here now, it only lists the Solaris and the Solaris 2. So when you choose your size, the model drop down box is only going to show you what um, machine or machines work with that hoop. So you don't have to worry about picking the wrong one. So let's go back a page. And it works the same for all. And you can see even with the Bernina hoops, Dime has thought of everything. They've made that interesting Bernina hoop shape that they use. So your hoops are that size. But here's where you're going to find your stabilizers. Here's the sticky hoop pre-cut stabilizer peel and stick. That's the tearaway. And then next to it is the pre-cut stabilizer adhesive sew and wash with the purple label. So the uh, tearaway is the blue label. The um, adhesive sew and wash is that purple label. So let's click on this one and I'll show you again. You have a drop down box where you just choose your hoop size. Okay. They have millimeters. They, uh, cause I know that I think Bernina only uses millimeters, but if you know your size in um, inches, they have those listed as well so that you can pick out the proper pre-cut size for your hoop. So it's really easy. These hoops are really rather well priced, I think, for um, hoops. I mean, you know, our hoops can get pretty expensive, but these are great prices and I use them for so much. I will say I've been doing some napkins where I just did um, uh, actual fill stitch embroidery on them. I used the tearaway. I was really proud of myself. I used it. It worked. I understood how to use it. So yeah, I'm Kind of team tear away now. That's good. Always keep learning. So let's go back to our main screen and wrap up for today. Let's get rid of our shared screen there. There we go. So remember, guys, um, if you have comments, leave them below. Um, I'd love to know, have you used a sticky hoop? What do you make with your sticky hoop? I'd love to know that. Have you tried the new adhesive sew and wash? I actually know that this was a request from numerous dime customers. And so, um, you know, if you guys really want something, keep asking, keep asking. I know it takes a while because, you know, dime just doesn't come up with something in a day. These hoops, they're tested for well over a year on all the machine brands before they ever even think about <coughs> putting them out and sometimes longer because they want you to have success. And of course, I want you to have success too. That's why I do these videos to try and help you out with all of that. So um, if you are interested, there is the dzgns.com website. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I've had a really sore throat for a couple days now. Um, there's that for you. Again, here is my website. And again, if you like this video or any of my others, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I would appreciate it. And as I tell you every time, because you know, what do I believe? I believe we're all super creative, artistic people in our own right. At whatever level we do this art form, we're artists. So... I'll tell you what I tell everybody when I close out these events. Go so life beautiful. I know you can and I know you will. Until next time, guys. Bye for now.